Interesting. Um, <clears throat> it started out as, you know, it was just a number. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a number, you know, that, you know, people chose to wear the number, whatever the case may be. But we had took a group of kids to um, L.A. at the time, um, about 15, 20 kids, to do a, a football combine. I took my son, a bunch of his, a bunch of his friends, and they did a the combine. They did pretty good. Uh, some did well. Some didn't do so well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we talked about it. They had fun. It was just our way of showing them how the competition was mm -hmm. and what they needed to work at. And when we got home, um, my son spent the night at his friend's house. His name was Don. He was uh, on the JV team, and he wore number two. And so he ended up, um, you know, he stayed at his house um, that night. And I think it was the next night they were um, planning on going to the bowling alley. And I get a phone call late that night and said there was a, a shooting. There was a drive-by shooting. Something happened at the bowling alley and everybody had to leave early. Um, and when Donnell and them, went to this um went out to the bowling alley, he had to do some chores first. They were a little bit late. So they missed everybody there. By the time they got there, it just so happened that some kids, uh some gang members were waiting in the parking lot mm -hmm. and they saw them pull up and they just targeted their car. Mm -hmm. And they got into a high speed chase on the freeway and they shot fired numerous shots into the car and they and they killed uh they killed they hit three people and Two of them died. I get a phone call at 1 o'clock in the morning not knowing what's going on, not knowing if my son was in the car or not. Mm -hmm. So heart dropped, man. My heart just dropped, and I didn't know what was really going on for like about 20 minutes. I found out my son mom had picked him up, so he was at home, mm -hmm. which gave me a little bit of relief. But then again, these are all my kids. Yeah, You know, these are my players, their friends, and stuff like that. So... You know, it's automatic panic, and so he ended up done losing his life in that in that that drive by him and another friend of his that attended, Mama Miguel. Um, but the number two, what happened was, um, you know, from that, I know at the funeral we presented his mom with the number two jersey um, in an enclosed case, and um, we just kind of adapted that number. We removed it from JV. And on varsity, those that were close to him, of course, everybody wanted to mm -hmm. honor him with that number. And so there was a couple of kids that kind of, um, you know, got into the number and did extremely well. And it just kind of took on, it just kind of took on its, its own thing. So thing, yeah. everybody understands that the number two is not a number that is chosen by anyone. Mm -hmm. I choose who wears that number. Mm. It's personal. Yeah. You know, because... Um, Donnell was a great kid. Showed up, worked every day. Take your time, coach. Take your time. Take your time, coach. You know, a young man from the community that was supported heavily by his father and, and, and his mother, but his father was always there. I played. His father was my teammate. But I always remember him showing up and um he wasn't, you know, he wasn't a father just that you didn't want to talk to. He mm -hmm. sat back, he watched his son, he corrected him when he was wrong, and they had a real good relationship. I always remember that because he called his father that day after we left. He said, Dad, I didn't do well at all. You know, I need to work on this, and I need to work on this. And, uh, you know, they just had a real father-son conversation, connection, yeah. a real connection, yeah. And so, um, you know, after that, it's hard to see your kids go through that. It's hard to bury a kid. Um, but then as a father, you know, for his father not to have um, <clears throat> the answers that he wanted as a father, mm -hmm. 
who did this to my son, who took his life. And he couldn't get the answer. So it was hard. You know, a few months went by, um, a year went by, got the other jersey. And me and my son and a couple of teammates is really close with Donnell. We got the jersey. We, hey, we got to take this jersey to his pops. This is the other two jersey. Mm -hmm. You know, so we went and we, we, we took it to Pop's house and we gave it to him. And we sat and we talked with him for a while. And um, heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. I can see as a father how you can relate to him Man, in that it situation. Was, um, heartbreaking mm -hmm. I mean to see I mean his father was heartbroken mm -hmm. physically mentally he was broken and he talked to the guys he encouraged them he says I hear about you he said I just can't bring myself to come and see we invited him to the game and stuff like that he just couldn't mm -hmm. do it um it's kind of it's kind of crazy man but um you know I think a few months after that um I found a dad, you know, dead in his house. Just heartbroken. And losing his child. Yeah. Yeah, so that number two, man, is real dear. Um, you got to be a good student. Mm -hmm. You got to be a good athlete. You got to have great character. You have to want to be a leader in the community. Mm -hmm. You got to have a sense of humor. You gotta be a leader. You just gotta be special, man. You gotta be special. You gotta be extremely special. And I pick a player every year who I feel exemplifies that. Yeah. And they don't know who it is. You know, and some of them they 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 don't want the number. You know, they have they have their own things. They like, hey, coach, I'm on the phone. I'm on. Can I get five? Can I get this? Can I get this number? And I'm like, oh, you're wearing two. And I don't, what do you mean I'm wearing two? You're wearing two. The number chose you. Yeah. You are the leader. You're the person on this team who's going to lead by example. And we sit and have a conversation, and I explain to them about Donnell Pleasant. I mean, I'm sorry about Donnell Davis. And we, um, we just have a conversation about it. And they understand that, you know, their leadership, their role, the honor that I'm giving them of putting that number on means Cares so much. Yeah. It means so much not only to me, but that to the team, community. Uh -huh. You know, we always, we you know, we always twos up. Mm -hmm. We've been doing that since he passed. You know, we pay our tribute. We look up. We give our twos up. Um, starting with with Donnell, and to this day, we still do that. Still do it national you know, anthem. Some yeah. The, yeah, some of the kids don't even know what don't what even know understand what it, what it means mm -hmm. or where it comes from, but. You know, we will never forget that. Yeah. We'll never forget that. And one of my, um, one of the alumni, he actually wrote up a piece here about why we wear the number two and the significance of it. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it's just, it just something that's near and dear to me, man. So every mm -hmm. time we see that number. Um, special. Yeah, that, that, that kid is extra special. Yeah. Thank you for, for explaining that whole backstory to us. Um, really appreciate it. It's, it's really been nice to watch. I'm thinking about the past number twos. Yeah. And they exemplify everything you've said, you know? Yeah, so we were like, this year with Roger Robinson, you know, he had the number for two years. And mm. his father, when I, I see his, I see Donnell's father and his father. Really? You know, he shows up and extremely supportive. And that same type of relationship is there with them, yeah. Yeah, so every time I just, it's something from every kid that resonates from that, you know. Mm -hmm. So just, just the way they lead, um, Donnell was a character. He was funny. He kept everybody laughing all the time, mm -hmm. but he worked so hard and was a 3.5 student, outstanding kid. Never, he never complained about nothing. He just, that's a really good trait. It is, it yeah. is. So, you know, it, it's a process every year that's it's not it's not something we vote on or anything like that. It's just something that um, you know, myself 
maybe one or two coaches would even, hey, he's that guy. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he, he's that guy. So wow. we, we, we a, carry that very deep. Near that's a great it. story. I appreciate you sharing. And um, I can't mm-hmm. wait to see who wears the number two this year. Um, it's a blessing to play football in college. And fortunately, you were able to experience that. Um, can you tell us about your time at Fresno State? But more specifically, your first impression on the talent level there. And uh, we are speaking to the two-time WAC conference leader in kickoff return yardages, too. So, I mean, I don't know what he's going to have to say about the competition there. But, uh, yeah, what was your first impression? Um, you know, coming from Bakersfield Junior College, Junior college uh-huh. um, you know, trying to figure out, you know, like San Diego State, Fresno State, because they both had offered me, both were doing well, both both had Heisman candidates on their mm-hmm. um, potential Heisman candidates on the roster. Um, f- both had very good receiving cores, mm-hmm. you know. Um, when I decided to, when it was decided for me to attend Fresno State. Um, I think they were number five in the na- in the nation as a receiving core, and then when I when I ended up signing with them, we actually went up to number three because I was the number one Top receiver in, uh-huh. in, in, in California, and so we jumped up a bit, and it was it was competitive, man. Mm-hmm. It was super competitive. These guys could fly, you know. I had Charlie Jones outside, young. He was a sophomore at the time that ran a four three. Mm-hmm. Um, Brian Roberson who was a freshman at the time that was running a four three. Lee Harris, uh, uh, Malcolm F- Malcolm F- Malcolm Sebron, who's ends up his name is Michael F- Mom, Malcolm Floyd, the same as Michael Floyd played for the Chargers, Chargers yeah. which is his brother. This is his brother. Yes. Wow. So that's a different story there, but he was on the squad. The Titus Winans, I mean, all these guys from Crenshaw from up north. That was all the top receivers. Mm-hmm. Going there and not being afraid to compete said a lot. Mm-hmm. And I knew I was a top kick returner as well. Dog in you. And they could do it as well. But um, coming in and competing with the top group, it showed exactly who I was. I'm not afraid to compete. You know, mm-hmm. I was bigger. I wasn't as fast, but I was fast uh, for my size. And I was fearless. And so, uh, you know, coming in and, and playing with that group, and along with Trent Dilfer, who was a, a, a um, you know, first-round draft pick quarterback and up for the Heisman, it was uh, – you know, I think it was a great pick for me, great decision, uh, great great choice for me to go there. And I tell the kids all the time, I said, hey, man, all the receivers I played with at Fresno State, everyone that was on scholarship, um, it was nine of us that went to the NFL Dang. in three years. We had wow. nine players go to the NFL in three years, and it was crazy. So, um, Iron sharpens iron. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, and so- that – you know, the proof was in the pudding, man. Yeah. We, we all came and we all we all went to the next level and had pretty good careers. Yeah, don't be afraid to go somewhere where you're going to have to yeah. compete because it's probably going to bring the best out of you. Yes, indeed. Moving on to the next level after after college, you were drafted in the fifth round by the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, can you talk to us on just how did it feel to get that call? Oh, man, that whole experience is uh... – it's nerve wracking, man. Especially if you know you don't really know where you're going. And I was a Mel Kiper. I mean, is one of the most underrated receivers in the draft. One of the underrated players, mm-hmm. and um, he 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 predicted me as like uh, you know projected me as the 15th best receiver. Mm-hmm. And just when you find out that this is really a business, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I had a decent senior year, you know, did okay at the combine, was sick, was sick, didn't run and stuff like that. But I was the 15th uh, receiver drafted. He had you spot on. <laughs> he had me spot on. I mean, they went must have been right off his report. Um, but, um, you know, I was, I was freaking out. First day went by. I thought I was going to be a third, at least a third round pick. Um, and guys just popped up from everywhere and, uh, you know, that second day it was nerve wracking. I was actually just laying in the bed at the time, just kind of taking my, just trying not to just stay staring at the yeah, TV and the whole you, nine. Yeah. I had dozed off and a phone rang, man. It was the Cincinnati Bengals. 
Um, same t same team my my uncle played for. Played for the one that yeah. that used to train you when you were seven years old. Yeah. So I actually, uh, you know, got super excited. And the first thing that came to my mind, I was I'm excited about being drafted. Then I was like, what the heck am I going to do in Cincinnati, man? <laughs> I'm like, man, Coming from San Diego, like, yeah. The only thing I heard of Cincinnati was, not even my uncle, I was like, WKRP in Cincinnati. It was, like, it was a radio show about this radio host, man. Yeah. And I was like, I used to watch it from time to time. And I'm like, I'm like, what the heck am I going to do in Cincinnati? This is crazy. But um, very thankful. I um, was extremely happy about it. And, um you know, I'm always, always grateful for them for giving me my opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, the theme of this interview kind of has been full circle. Um, another full circle moment for you is the whole process from going from high school to college and then potentially the NFL is really a blessing, but it doesn't happen fast. And um, like everyone, I'm sure you have things from your past that you wouldn't change and things from the past you wish you would have done a certain way. But um,